Yes, Illinois. Mr. Biggs, thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, you're recognized to speak on whatever amendments you wish to discuss. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank you all. I know the, the hour's late. I will try to endeavor to be briefer than I normally am. So uh, I thank you for that. And I also thank Cong Congressman Higgins, Congressman Roy, and others who have worked diligently on the package that we're considering this week. Um, I want to point out two things before I get into the meat of my my, my talk here is that the Department of the Treasury has indicated that over the past 366 days, the total national debt has increased by $2.44 trillion. Debt held by the public has increased by $2.18 trillion over the same period, and intergovernmental debt is $264.2 billion, which gives you that $2.44 trillion. Then I'll also point out that um, Secretary Austin recently um, released uh, material where he indicated that um, the one thing, and I'll, I'll read this to you if I can, it's got it small. The single most important thing that Congress can do to ensure U.S. national security is to pass timely legislation for all 12 appropriation bills for FY 2025. I don't disagree with what he was saying. Now, to the meat of this, I am an original co-sponsor of the SAVE Act, and I support its passage in the House. Sometimes when a must-pass legislative vehicle is a bill, um, we want to attach we want to attach something like House, uh, excuse me, like the SAVE Act to that bill. Maybe we can get that passed. But in this particular case, um, we're continuing federal government spending at the levels conservatives have railed against for years. Both parties, my, my party, your party, everybody's party is guilty of this. I agree with the sentiment expressed by Congressman Massey earlier this week when he, and I'll just paraphrase, indicated that Congress is spending our country into oblivion. I think it is, as the Department of Treasury indicates and as um, Secretary Austin indicated. Now, the reality is Secretary Austin isn't the first uh, Department of Defense or National Security Advisor who has told us that our number one threat, security threat, is our national debt. The status quo spending levels that this body aims to extend have led us to a national debt in excess of $35 trillion. Interest payments alone now exceed government spending on defense. This vehicle also fails to secure conservative policy riders. It continues to fund lawfare against President Trump. It continues to fund the Biden-Harris border uh, crisis by allowing the mass paroles of migrants into the United States. And it continues to fund the salary and expense of Alejandro Mayorkas, Secretary Mayorkas, the architect of the border crisis. The bill continues to fund racially discriminatory programs and trainings throughout the government continues to fund a shiny new office for a federal agency that spies on American citizens. I urge my colleagues to consider another path. House Republicans have already passed bills that fund the majority of the discretionary budget. We should reconcile those bills with the Senate and continue working to pass individual appropriation bills that bend down our spending trajectory. And if we can't reach an agreement before the end of the fiscal year, we can pass legislation to ensure that salaries of our military service members, border security and immigration agencies, and others are paid while we continue to negotiate other spending items. I firmly believe that our approach is flawed. Um, the end does not justify the means when Congress reckless spending will drown Americans in debt for generations to come. And I urge you to consider my amendments, which are no special order, but I'll just r r let you know what they are. One, no funding for special counsel to bring criminal prosecution of a former or current president or vice president of either party. No funding for local governments to take civil action or criminal prosecution against a former or current president or vice president. No funding for CBP-1 or a successor app to facilitate parole of any alien to the United States. No funding for the salary and expenses of Secretary of Homeland Security occupied by Alejandro Mayorkas. No funding for DEI programs or trainings. No funding for the new FBI headquarters in Maryland. And strike and replace the CR with funding a Secure America Act, which provides funding for salaries of armed forces, immigration and border security agents and others responsible for keeping America safe, should we not be able to timely get our work done by the end of this fiscal year, which, since we just got off a seven-week break, makes it very, very difficult and uh, to get that done. And so I recognize that I may be engaged in a Sisyphean task, but I shall continue to try to roll that boulder uphill every year. 
with that, Mr. Chairman, thank, again, thank the committee. I know it's, it's late. You guys had a merciless schedule on your first day back, but thank you. I yield. We're young. We can handle it. <laughs> I thank you for your testimony. I have no questions. The ranking member is recognized. I just ask um, if all your amendments are blocked, will you vote against the rule? I'm not inclined to vote against the rule. That I have a prediction that they're going to block all your amendments. Uh, so uh, well, appreciate you being here, but uh, uh, that's, I think that's kind of where we are. So, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. McGovern, if I can respond, yes, the, I anticipate all my amendments will be right. blocked, but the, but I've gotten used to that by now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I yield back. Gentleman from Georgia is recognized. No questions from Georgia. The gentlelady from Pennsylvania. Has no questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So, thank you. Uh, seeing no other members wishing to ask questions, the uh, the witness is excused. Without objection, the written testimony of the following members will be included in the record: Mr. Arrington, Mr. Obernolte, Mr. Higgins. Is there anyone else seeking to testify on HR 1398, HR 1425, HR 1516, HR 7980? H.R. 9456 or H.R. 9494. Without objection, that closes the hearing portion of the meeting. Without objection, the committee stands in recess until 8.30.